morning kids happy sunday how's everyone doing today it's nice and sunny out and it's just god is so good huh he's blessed us with so much well today's lesson is on chapter 11. we have teacher diana teaching us today and it's gonna be on the seven seas of history sea like as in cat um, and our bible verse is psalms 8 3 to 4. so she's gonna be go going over everything don't forget to grab your bibles and your worksheets go on our church app under kids corner you'll see resources and make sure you download um, the your worksheets there you'll see your grades and then also don't forget your thank you posters we extended the date to next week so if you haven't done it yet, you haven't turned it in make sure you turn it in and then we're going to get it all prepared for the following weekend which is going to be memorial weekend so make sure you thank everybody that you want to thank be creative and have fun with it um, but before we start worship, we have a little video from our lesson. So this is going to give you a brief um, overview of our lesson before Miss Diana goes uh, into her lesson. And then we're going to have worship after that. So make you sure you sing your hearts to Jesus. And don't forget, you guys, have a blessed week. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun. Go outside. And we will see you next Sunday. Have a blessed day. We love you. We miss you. We're always praying for you. God bless you guys. Love you. <laughs>
Well, my name is Mr. Ham, and over here I have Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis is actually a dinosaur sculptor. He's a taxidermist. He's a singer. And Buddy Davis comes all the way from a place called Henpeck, Ohio. It's a strange name, isn't it? Henpeck, Ohio. Well, boys and girls, put your hand up if you've heard of the word evolution. Oh, boy, I think just about everyone puts their hands up. Hands down. Put your hand up if you've heard that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Dear, oh dear, hands down. Put your hand up if you've heard that people came from ape-like creatures or something like that. You know, I think just about everybody in the world has heard those things. And I want to tell you right from the start here this morning that neither Buddy or myself, we don't believe in evolution. Evolution is the idea some people have to explain life without God. You know, when you came in here this morning, did you look at this building and say, wow, I got here by an explosion in a brick factory? You don't think that? <laughs> no, you know somebody designed this building. And I certainly don't believe that life came about by chance random processes millions of years ago in some soup in the sea, life was formed and then one kind of animal changes into another, ape-like creatures into people until finally here we are in uh, Pennsylvania. I, I, I don't believe that at all, do you? <laughs> No, I believe what the Bible says, actually. I believe that God created everything. We're going to talk about that uh, in a little while in more detail. I don't believe that dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, and I certainly don't believe, and neither does Buddy, that you came from ape-like creatures or anything like that. I mean, did your grandfather look like that? <laughs> I don't think so. Did your grandmother look like that? <laughs> no, not at all. In fact, uh, you're very, very different to chimps or to apes and, and creatures like that. In fact, here's a man and he's looking at a chimp and he says, I can think, compose music, build bridges, fly airplanes, make computers, what can you do? And all he can think about is what? A banana. Well, boys and girls, I don't believe we came from ape-like creatures. I don't believe in evolution. Don't believe in millions of years. I believe what the Bible says. Do you know the Bible is a very special book? It's a unique book. It's different than any other book in the whole world because the Bible claims to be the Word of God who knows everything, who's always been there, who's told us the whole history of the universe. In fact, do you know what I call the Bible? The history book of the universe. Let's say that in a loud voice. The history book of the universe. And mums, dads, and teachers, here's the history that the Bible teaches us, that God created a perfect world. He created everything in six days, just a few thousand years ago. That the first man, Adam, sinned, and death came into the world, and there's the origin of death. That there was a global flood at the time of Noah's day. And so all the life on the land was destroyed except those on Noah's Ark. And Noah's Ark landed in the Middle East and the animals and people got off the Ark. And then there was an event called the Tower of Babel when God gave different languages. And that would cause all the different people groups like the American Indians, Fijians, Hawaiians, Eskimos, Australian Aborigines to form. And then Jesus Christ, the Son of God, stepped into that history. Because the first man, Adam, sinned, we'd be separated from God forever. So he stepped into history to die on a cross and be raised from the dead so those who trust in him can spend eternity with him. And one day there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth to come. That's the true history of the universe that God has told us. And you know what I'm going to show you here today? Buddy and I are both going to do all sorts of interesting things to help you understand that what the Bible says is true. It explains the universe, it explains who you are, it explains dinosaurs, it explains fossils. Isn't it exciting being a Christian and knowing we have a book that's the true history of the universe? really is, isn't it? Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for Sunday School. I know that we've been going over our memory verse, so I wanted to take a moment to start with that. Book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? So everyone be sure to study your new memory verse. We'll be going over that in the weeks to come. So I believe last week we had some review and we've been talking about the Bible, uh, how important that is and how we can trust it. We learned that God is awesome and he's given us an amazing promise of good news for sinners through Jesus Christ. So the Bible actually covers all of history. Sometimes it's actually called the history book of the universe because it tells about God's perfect plan, God's history from the very beginning of the world all the way to today and even into the future. So by way of example, I have a story I'm gonna share with you today. 
It's a book here. If you know the story, The Three Little Pigs. The second pig made his house in no time. The first pig made a house of straw. And the three little pigs never saw the big bad wolf again. So how was that? Did you like the story? Was it easy to follow? Did it make sense? That's right, not really. It's kind of confusing, right? The reason is, it's not the right way to read the story. What did I do wrong? That's right, I was out of order. You have to start from the beginning. In order for the story to make sense, I should have started at the very beginning and read it in order all the way to the end. It's the same way with history. It's just like when we have a story to read, we need to start from the beginning and go to the end in order for it to make sense. So God's word can help us with that. If you have your Bibles, we have our Bible. We start from the beginning and we read the story until the end. It's a history of everything. So today we're going to be talking about the seven C's of history. You can see here you've got creation, corruption, catastrophe, confusion, Christ, cross, and consummation. We'll be going over all of these in detail so that we can find out what each, what each one of those means and what exactly does that relate to the Bible. So the first C, if you have your Bible, you can open up to or you can have an adult maybe jot down some notes and you can check it out later. But in Genesis 1-1, that's the beginning of the Bible, the first chapter, the first verse. And our Bibles are sometimes called, in Hebrews, it's called a two-edged sword. And in Ephesians, it's called the sword of the spirit. So your Bible is your sword, if you think about it. So in the beginning, in Genesis 1-1, it's the beginning. It's our very first verse. And what does this verse tell us? Some of you may know it by heart. It basically tells us that God created the heaven and earth. It tells us about our first C, creation. So the Bible says that God made everything by the power of his word. And that means that he spoke everything into existence. There was nothing there before, and God spoke it into existence. God made Adam and Eve. They were the first people. He created them very special and very different from everything else. They were created in God's image. The Bible tells us that God didn't do all this creating just at once. But God did this creating in six days. Do you guys know how many hours are in a day? That's right, 24 hours in one day. So God created the heavens and the earth, the entire world in six 24 hour days, which is kind of cool if you think about it. And it also tells us this was about 6,000 years ago, not millions of years as sometimes you hear people will say when they talk about dinosaurs and space and things, it wasn't millions of years ago. It was about 6,000 years ago. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, God tells us what he thought of the creation. The Bible tells us exactly what he thought in Genesis 1, 31. The creation was very good. God's creation was truly beautiful. There was no sin. There was no death. There was no disease, no sickness, and most of all, no fear. There was no fear. Everything was good. It was all very good. But then we move to our second C. We have corruption. Corruption. Sin basically entered God's very good creation. So God's good creation didn't stay very good for very long because it means that it was ruined. The word corruption actually means something is ruined and it's no longer very good. The corruption that we're talking about here is sin. Adam and Eve were the very first people to sin against God. They disobeyed him, and their sin ruined all of God's very good creations, and it separated them from God because of that sin, because they didn't listen to him. Because remember, as we've talked about in our past classes, God is holy, and God hates sin. So in Genesis, the second chapter, verse 17, it talks about, how did Adam and Eve sin? What did they do? So God told Adam and Eve not to do just one thing. Do you guys know what that was? You guys probably remember. They told him not to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Remember, we've talked about that. And what would happen if they ate that fruit? Remember, it says surely that they would die. So 
God said that Adam and Eve would die if they ate that fruit. And unfortunately, you know what? They did eat it. They disobeyed God. And now God was going to have to punish them because they disobeyed him. But it wasn't only Adam and Eve that had to be punished. The Bible said that because of Adam's sin, all of us sin too. All of man, everyone sins because of Adam's sin. God's very good creation was ruined because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. It was corrupted. Our second C, the corruption. So because of this sin, now the world would have sickness, we would have pain, there'd be sadness, and even death. This is what that second C stands for, the corruption. So those are, those are our first two Cs. So the next C we're gonna talk about is catastrophe. Does anyone know what catastrophe means? The catastrophe we're talking about here is a big flood, God flooding the earth. So because of Adam and Eve's sin, they couldn't stay in the beautiful garden anymore. They were separated from God, but they had had many children. And as those children grew up and started having their own families, there were more and more people on the earth. But remember, the sin had entered already in through Adam and Eve. And so every person since then has been born with a sinful heart. All of us, everyone since Adam. So the people disobeyed God and they sinned against him and they were evil and wicked. So God wasn't pleased with the wickedness and the sins of the people. And because he's a holy God, he had to punish that sin. He had to punish them. So he did this by sending the catastrophe. The catastrophe is a big, huge disaster, something very terrible, something that destroys large scale. And so the catastrophe here that we're talking about was a worldwide flood. God sent a flood to cover the entire earth and to destroy everything on the earth because of the sin. It was a very sad time. The chapter you may want to look at is Genesis chapter 7, verse 23. God had to punish the sins of the people in the world, and this was a very serious judgment. And the Bible actually tells us how serious it was. In the verse, it goes on to say that God destroyed every living substance on the face of the ground. So everything from animals to, to birds to bugs to people, everything, God flooded and destroyed the entire earth because of their sin. So... All of the land, the birds, everything was killed in the, wor the worldwide flood. But do you remember who God saved from the flood? That's right, Noah. Noah and those that were on the ark with him. Right before the flood came, God told Noah to build an ark. And Noah was obedient. He obeyed and he and his family were saved from the flood. So our third C is the catastrophe. The flood, the flooding and destruction of the earth because of sin. So the next thing we're going to talk about is confusion. God judged sin by confusing the language, by the way that the people spoke. So after the flood, Noah and his family, they got off of the ark and they started their lives all over again. They began to have families and their families grew up and had families. And it wasn't long before there were many people all over the face of the earth again. They populated the earth again. But Noah's children and grandchildren continued to disobey God. Even after the terrible flood, God told them to spread out and fill the whole earth. But they decided to all stay together in one place. They wanted to build a tall tower to the heavens and make a great name for themselves instead of listening to God. So in Genesis chapter 11, verse 9, it talks about what happens next. God, once again, because of their own disobedience, had to punish the people. So what he did is he confused their language and he scattered them. So what that means to confuse their language is to make them all speak different languages. Maybe some people, some of you may speak Spanish, some of you may speak Chinese, some of you may speak other languages from other family members that you know. So we all have different tongues, different languages. It sounds like a strange punishment kind of, but you see all the people at that time only spoke one language and they all understood each other. So it wasn't difficult to communicate. They all worked together 
and they were building the city and the tower for themselves. But God changed that. So when God came down and confused the language, suddenly all these people, they couldn't understand each other anymore. They were speaking different languages and they couldn't communicate. So they couldn't work together to continue to build that tower. They dispersed, they spread out and were fragmented. So it means that they moved on to different directions and they were scattered all over the earth the way that God had asked them to do in the first place. But because they were disobedient, that's why God caused the confusion with the language. We have our fourth C, confusion. He judged their sin by confusing the common language. So the sad truth is, is that the people kept disobeying God. And when we disobey God, God has to punish sin because God is holy and God hates sin. The Bible says though that we're all sinners, all of us, everyone since Adam. Adam and Eve were the very first people. So when Adam sinned in the beginning, he passed the sin nature on to all the people who would come after him, including you and me. We all sin and disobey God. And because of our sins, we deserve to be judged and punished by God too, unless someone would take our punishment for us. And did someone do that? Do we know who that person is? Yes, we do. Jesus. Jesus took that. So that brings us to our fifth C, Christ, Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter one, verse 21, it talks about this verse. It talks about Jesus. And why did Jesus come to the earth? Do we know why Jesus came to the earth? He came to save people from sin, for you, for me, for all of us. Jesus is the creator and son of God. He came to earth and was born as a human being. He was always obedient to God, his father. He lived a perfect life without any sin. He was never disobedient. Jesus came so that sinners, including you and me, could be saved. But how? That brings us to our next, see, the cross. Jesus was crucified on the cross the perfect sacrifice for sin. If you look at the book of John, chapter three, verse 16, it talks about more. So how is Jesus gonna save us sinners from the punishment of sin? It basically explains that he was going to be killed for us. Jesus died for our sins. God sent Jesus because he loved the world. He loved the world so much that he sent Jesus to die and take the punishment for our sins, for your sins, for my sins, for everyone after Adam. And Jesus tells us that if we repent, if and repent means if, if we are sorry and we change our ways, that it means we're sorry for all of our sins and we stop doing them. We turn away from those sins and we believe in him, then we'll be saved from God's punishment all because of God's great love for us, for you and for me. Jesus is the only person who ever lived who did not deserve God's punishment because Jesus was without sin. He was always obedient. He was perfect. He never sinned, but he chose to die on the cross so that he could take the punishment of our sin for himself. What a beautiful gift. Isn't that amazing when you think about that? No one else in the world can do that for sinners. Jesus is the only one that could save us. That's why we call Jesus our savior because he's saved us. But there's something else to this verse. If you take a look at it, what does it say? What does it say will happen to those of us that believe? If you look back at John 3:16, it says whoever believes in him will not perish. Perish is another word for dying, he won't perish, but he'll have everlasting life. Isn't that amazing? Everlasting life. So what do you think everlasting life means? It means to be in heaven forever and ever with Jesus and God, right? Doesn't that sound beautiful? What an amazing gift. So that brings us to our last C. Our last C is consummation. Consummation. So it sounds like a tricky word, but what does that really mean? God is promising a new heaven and a new earth for all believers. 
The consummation is a wonderful promise. It's a promise that believers, those of us that believe, we believe in Jesus, that we're going to be with God forever. But this promise is only for sinners who've believed and trust in Jesus Christ to save them and forgive them of their sins. So what that means is if there's somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus, who says, who rejects Jesus and doesn't believe the truth, then this promise is not for them. You have to believe the truths that we read about in our Bibles. So the Bible says that if we believe that, then we'll be saved. Isn't that awesome? So when we talk about the consummation, we're talking about really God's plan. God's plan for the very end of history as we know it. Kind of like how we did with the book. We're not going to start in the middle and then jump to the end and then the beginning. This consummation, it's going to be the very end of history as we know it. Right now, with everything happening, the world can seem kind of sad sometimes, right? Sometimes we may feel a little bit sad. Sometimes it feels a little bit scary or uncertain. People get sick. Families have trouble. Pets die. It can be hard sometimes. But Jesus gives us hope for a better place. That's exciting. Doesn't it sound like it's going to be an amazing time? So this is something that believers can be excited about and look forward to. Our final C, the consummation. God's final plan really is what that means. God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And it's going to be very good. The life with sin and death and suffering will finally be over for everyone who believes and trusts in Jesus. You and me, we believe in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Absolutely. Do you trust in Jesus? Absolutely. That's us. And the suffering and any scary, uncertain, sad things will be over for everyone who believes in Jesus and trusts in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins. If you believe in Jesus and you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins and he lives in your heart, this promise, this plan is for you and for me. Isn't that exciting? So the whole history, we talked about the whole history book from beginning to the middle to the end. That's basically where our C's are. We talked about the creation, you know, in the beginning with Adam and Eve. The corruption, Adam and Eve sinning. The catastrophe, God having to punish that sin and flooding the entire earth to destroy it all and start over. The confusion, because once again, man was not obeying God. They were building the tower and not dispersing like he said. So he caused confusion with tongues and languages so that they would spread out. Christ, Jesus Christ came as the perfect sacrifice to die for you and me and every sinner since Adam. The cross. Jesus was crucified on the cross. Perfect and sinless. He died for you and for me and everyone after Adam so that we could have everlasting life. And finally, the consummation, the plan, God's plan. We know how the history book is going to end. Again, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, God has been in control of everything from the very beginning. He's promised us that there's going to be a wonderful future for you, for me, and anyone who believes in Jesus for all eternity for those who trust in him. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you and we thank you so much to be able to get together and study the best history book ever, Lord Jesus, your word from the beginning, from the creation to Jesus coming and being sacrificed and to what we know is coming, the end of history, your plan for us, for those of us who believe in Jesus and accepted him into our hearts, Lord. I pray that this message be heard and taken away by the by the young minds listening today and that we hold on to God's promise and his truth. We look forward to being all together in person again soon and we just thank you for the opportunity to study your word today. And it's in our Lord Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
Thank you, everyone. See you next week.